Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our session. Uh, good afternoon to those of you in New Zealand as well. Uh, fantastic to have you all on board for this session uh, titled The Future of Financial Report. Uh, this is a webinar co-presented between Kilimanjaro Consulting, uh, Enterprise, and of course, Focus. And really the purpose of today's session is to just explore a little bit more around the modern tools and techniques and approaches that are available to us today and how we manage uh, our, our financial statements, our financial reporting, and also our budgeting and forecasting processes. I think we can all attest uh, to the difficulty that sometimes we see uh, within our finance teams around this process. And in many respects, this has changed significantly. Uh, you know, we've gone from very traditional top-down budgets that are done once once a year. Um, you know, the CFO pushes them out throughout the organisation, and, and it's a static thing that never changes. Uh, to now, there's much more input and collaboration required. We have divisions and departments and team leaders who are contributing to the process. We've moved to more of a bottoms up type approach to budgeting, and we've also seen this increased requirement around forecasting and reforecasting, particularly. Uh, in today's more turbulent and, and, and risky, uh, you know, questionable times. Um, so the requirement for um, a, a more collaborative, flexible uh, and engaging budgeting and forecasting process has become more and more obvious for most of us. And we've seen great interest in this session today. And so we really want to talk about some alternative approaches to managing our financial reporting and perhaps most importantly, this whole budgeting and forecasting process and how we can make that more of a value-added process within our organizations. So firstly, thank you to all of you for joining. Um, just a little bit of a reminder, we do have our Q&A button uh, at the bottom of the screen and please feel free throughout the session to ask questions as we go. Uh, we will keep the answers to the end of the session. We'll make sure we keep plenty of time to answer any questions that anybody might have. Um, but please feel free to use that as we go. And I'd like to also just welcome Craig Midlin uh, from Focus, uh, one of the long-standing Focus employees who we've had a great relationship with. And this is uh, not our first webinar. So Craig, great to have you on board again for, for another round. Yes. And uh, let, let me hand straight over to you. No worries. And uh, thank you. Like uh, Stephen mentioned, really great to see uh, so many people take an interest in uh, in this uh, subject. It's it's obviously very, uh, very topical at the moment. And like Stephen mentioned, please uh, enter in any questions as we're going. Uh, we're not going to be able to go really in depth into absolutely everything, given the time we've got. But really, today's session is to show you what focus can bring to uh, to your financial reporting and uh, and budgeting process, and answer any questions you might have, and hopefully, uh, if you like what you see, uh, getting in touch with Stephen and Stephen's team about the um, about maybe a bit more of a personalised one on one demo, so we can understand your particular requirements and show you what we can do. But you should get a pretty good sense about what the product is about today. The agenda you can see, we're going to talk a little bit, maybe expand, expand a little bit on what uh, Stephen was just talking about, introduce you to our financial statements products, uh, as well as our budgeting tools, and actually show you the product. So uh, so let's jump into it. Stephen did uh, mentioned this probably, even this screenshot probably looks relatively familiar to a lot of people, P&Ls and balance sheets and cash flow, everything like that in a spreadsheet, it's very uh, spreadsheet driven, it's a manual process, it can be prone to errors, it's labor intensive, it's not agile, we, uh, we're involving a limited number of maybe highly skilled resources to, to do this within the organization. Uh, and those resources are burdened with having to serve the rest of the business with, um, with data. And it probably looks a little bit like this. So we can have our, uh, we've got our MYOB ERP system sitting at the top there. And we've got uh, people inputting data and we've got our financial controllers or CFOs pulling this data out and feeding it to the business. 
Um, we've got our different stakeholders down the bottom there and they're receiving the data quite often, you know, days, if not weeks into the next month. Ultimately, they've got questions, concerns, problems, and that has to feed all the way back up through the top. And it just adds to that burden for the finance team and it, it's, it's time consuming. So our approach to this, uh, and you'll see this in the, in the demonstration is, your, your MYOB system uh, really is your source of truth. It sits at the center of uh, your business and we're, we're not changing that. You know, we, we pull the data, we integrate with both EXO and MyOB Advanced and we synchronize that data and put our financial solution around your ERP system. So now people can still input the data into the ERP and see it immediately back into our financial statements. So we don't have to get it out to Excel or anything like that. We can synchronize that data. Uh, but also we've got all those stakeholders that uh, we have around the rest of the business that are now able to access the data without waiting for the finance team to produce the reports. Uh, they're, they've got much more immediate access. They could be looking at this during the month and actually making decisions about the month in the month they're in as opposed to waiting you know two weeks afterwards to uh to make some decisions so really streamlining that process and how we do that is we give you the ability to not just produce a, a PL statement but also analyze and be able to add levels and be much more dynamic about it build or customize the statement that you're looking at. So you might have a different PL structure that you use at a branch level compared to what you share at a board level. You don't need to make changes in MYOB. They can be done inside focus and, and flow through. And if you've seen Stephen and I presenting on any of the uh, previous webinars, you know that visualization is absolutely a big part of focus uh, and that hasn't changed. We still have our visualizations in the product. But now we're talking about financial data, uh, even more so we've all, we always have um, governance and security inside focus. Uh, and now that we are more into the finance part of the business, that is uh, continuing and it somewhat even extended. So the security is controlled within the product. You can allow a CEO to see everything that is relevant the same PL or the same dashboard or whatever the case may be viewed by a branch manager, for example, while the data for their branch is the same, what they see might be reduced. They can't see some of those other, those other levels or accounts. So that's the financial side. Now let's actually talk about the, the budgeting side. I'm sure this, uh, this here doesn't look uh, strange, wouldn't look very foreign to many people. This should look pretty familiar as the budgeting process that we just about all go through where we've got management that starts the, the process, finance that does the heavy lifting and you know, produces CSV files, it's copying and pasting, it goes to you know, business heads and then a whole bunch of things get drawn around it. Uh, and then that process needs to um, needs to repeat, and you know it can go through multiple multiple versions. And as a result, it it becomes quite static. It's often standalone and disconnected, so it's not really it's not constantly looking at our data. It's only at that point in time in which we extracted it. It's quite linear. A lot of assumptions have to be made, and they they're often not updated as we're going along. It's also usually only retrospective. So it's such a burden on the business that we don't do it as often as we want. Uh, and as a result, it, it becomes a bit uh, dated. Now, a much better way of doing it is just like we we're talking about at the financial level is to put all this stuff in the middle. So we've got our ERP data, we've got the analytics of that, we've got our financials and now the budgeting that sits really at the core uh, and they're all talking and working together. And we've got it uh, synchronizing with, with MIB, or even if you've got external CRM systems or payroll systems, 
and you want that data coming into the uh, into the focus uh, ecosystem, allowing management and line of business to um, to contribute and work together, and not doing it just over email. So now it's it's dynamic. We're not we're working on a live sheet. We're not working in email anymore. And are you on version twelve or version fifteen? You know, it's now collaborative. We can actually talk about the data with the data and you'll see this in the demo. We're actually able to integrate data from other parts of your business. So whether that's sales data or inventory data or job costing, whatever the case may be, we can use different data that you have in uh, your MIB world and bring that into, um, into focus. And now that it's faster and easier and uh, is, is live, it can become not just doing it once a year and hope for the best, we can continually plan and tweak and change and alter our budget or our forecast as we go. So really in summary, what we're talking about is bringing not just the operational analytics uh, that uh, some of you may already be using focus for, but also introducing the financial statements and the budgeting into that same world so it becomes really company-wide planning and reporting. It's a single platform, one version of truth across the entire business that allows you to, to not have to be Excel whiz, not need to know how to um, use a programming language to, to build these things. It's something you can, uh, regardless of your skill set, you can do, uh, and it becomes that single version of truth across the business. All right. so. I'm gonna jump into the product itself. Um, just reiterating, please uh, uh, put any questions in as we're going. The more the merry really. Uh, we wanna make sure that you, uh, you're you getting the most out of uh, the session today. Okay, so those that have never seen uh, Focus before, it is a cloud-based product. It works on any internet enabled device, whether you're using uh, screens in the office, iPads, phones, it doesn't really matter what, uh, what you want to use it on. It's that single version truth. It can be used across all platforms. And it doesn't matter if you're running a cloud version of XO or a on-premise version of XO or you're running on Myob Advanced in the cloud. We can grab data from all of those. Uh, even if you've got legacy systems that are outside of that MIB world, uh, we can we can pull the, the data from those those older systems. But what we're going to concentrate on is um, is the financials and budgeting today. And what you can see in front of you is a pretty standard looking profit and loss statement. So we can use your chart of account structure as you have it in your ERP system. We can support multiple charts of account. So if you've got multi-company and you need to do consolidations, uh, you can do all of that in here. You no longer need to produce multiple statements and join them all together. You can do it all inside Focus. And what you can see here is I've got some income, some COGS, some operating expenses, and I can expand these out and actually see the detail behind them if I want to. So I can see what made up those numbers really quickly and easily but I can also introduce additional levels. So if you're a multi-company business, uh, I'll use country in my case, I can add these additional levels to my budget, or sorry, to my statement. So now I can be looking at my operating expense, same total, but now when I expand this out, I can see how each of my different uh, businesses is contributing also having the ability to go even further into the detail and see what makes up a number and even drilling right down into the journals without needing to jump back into the ERP system. An end user can understand the numbers that they're looking at very, very quickly and easily. So this gives them uh, the capability to answer their own questions. It doesn't have to always go back to the finance team all of this is governed and controlled. So if I'm not allowed to see the bad debt numbers or maybe I'm not allowed to see wages and commissions, I you can control what an end user can see. Just to highlight one point there, Craig, I think it's a really uh, important element of that governance aspect. Um, you know, mm -hmm. the fact that you can actually have, you know, one, one financial statement, one set of dashboard, one set of analytics, 
that varies or displays depending upon a user's role and their responsibilities within the business. Uh, it means you can write it once. It makes it simple. You're not managing multiple versions of, of a specific report or multiple versions of a specific spreadsheet. Um, it just okay. certainly makes things so much more agile from a finance team's perspective. Absolutely. Uh and to that point, sometimes though the questions aren't just about restricting on data. It might be it's um, you need to filter by time. You know, quite often financial reports are financial year to date and current month or something like that. If you want to see what it was two years ago, go for it. Or three months ago, you can chop and change because it's it's about using the data um, to to best understand what's going on in your business. Now, there's a lot we can do in here, and uh, I'm just conscious of time. I don't want to. Um, I do definitely want to take you through the, the budgeting process, but just important to note that while this might be your standard uh, P&L structure for the purpose of maybe budgeting or for board reporting, if you want to have additional um, profit and loss or balance sheet or cash flow statements, for example, you can come in and create, you can either edit existing ones or create entire new ones allowing you to, without having to make a change in the ERP system, you can choose the, how your statement represents. So what are the uh, groups, what calculations, how are they derived? What additional calculations or groups do you need in this particular statement? But also how do your, does your chart of accounts actually fit into this, this particular statement? Now you might be doing this you might be uh, interested in changing your PL or your chart of account structure for next year. So you want to build the structure in here and you want to budget against that structure to see what it's going to look like before you commit to making a change in the ERP. This does not write back to the ERP. Uh, so you can make changes in here for this statement without it breaking anything else. So very, very powerful, uh, very easy to come in and choose on this particular account which group it's actually going to belong to. All right, let's let's uh, let's jump into the budgeting because uh, that's uh, really what I guess a lot of us are, are here today to, to look at. It's important to note that you'll see here, this structure that we've got here, this is the same structure that we've got back over here. So we use, there's a wizard that uh, you can run that simply takes this PL structure and builds it into our budget. So everything lines up. And when we publish it, once we've made our changes and we publish it back, it all lines up. So you don't have to do anything uh, special to, to make it line up. It's already going to, to work against your structure because that's where it came from. And what you can see here, I've got a pretty standard looking structure, but Maybe when I start expanding these out, you can see I've actually got multiple levels, just like what we had in the PL. But maybe today, for the purpose of budgeting, I'm actually not uh, interested in starting at the category level. I'd actually like to look at it by category and then by branch before I end up at category. So I can move through the levels. So now when I expand out my Australian business, I can see it by branch and now when I expand this out I can see the numbers within it and I can expand this uh, again and see there's my sales line I can see what the number is I can see it's assigned to me I'm Bill the branch manager and I can very much like I could in any other spreadsheet I can come in and make changes I can type into the cells uh, I can write formulas just like you you normally could in a spreadsheet but I'm not I don't carry some of those uh, challenges that we would often see in a spreadsheet, challenges like workflow. So in uh, the focus budgeting and forecasting tool, this might be something that I assign to somebody else. So I can actually choose to, instead of emailing and asking them or cutting the sheet up and getting them to make a change, I could put some notes in and actually choose who I'm actually sending this to and they can contribute live on this sheet. Uh, so we're not going to have two now two versions of the same thing. We're still working on a single version, but we're making changes in a collaborative way. If uh, I assign it to somebody else and they make changes, I'll see those changes happening live. But maybe before I send it over, I want to make some of these changes myself. 
So if I'm looking at my uh, operating expenses, for example, I might be looking at my sponsorship and I did $14,000 of sponsorship last year and I can see it jumps all over the place. I might want to increase that by $10,000 for my next period. So I can ed enter in the numbers and choose to not only just spread it evenly, but pick up all of last year's peaks and troughs because it's, we're allocating more, but it's going to occur in the same periods. I could also actually just take the actuals and grow it by a percentage as well. But given this is an expense, I do want to put a bit of a cap on it. So I can actually choose to do that. And you'll see the zeros remain zeros, but the numbers changed accordingly to uh, adding in this extra value. Now, because we're now making changes to cells, there might be uh, down the line, we want to know what changed, when it changed, who changed it. Often, if you're doing this in a spreadsheet, you don't know. Unless you're going to go back through all the old versions, you're not going to know. Where in, uh, in budgeting here, you can now see what the number is, who changed it, and where it actually started. So as people make changes over time, we can see what they changed it from and when they actually did that. We can also leave comments on the line. Um, very easily and it will actually snapshot the value in which that uh, that comment was made so you you're going to get a running history on those changes over time so very very easy once we're happy with something we can also uh, complete it or we can assign it to somebody else uh, depending on what we want to do we can also introduce a, uh, a comparison line. So, and you can have multiple comparison lines. So especially when you get really deep into your budgeting process, where did you start from? So did we start, how much of a change are we actually making? And is that enough uh, of a change on previous year's actuals or even last year's budgets uh, or two years ago? You can have multiple uh, comparisons in here but really nice and easy and very functional way to see what, uh, what's going on there. Something else that uh, this does very well is not only just helping you manage your expenses or, or something like that, is we can actually bring in data from our other focus solutions. An example might be sales. So I've introduced my sales at a branch level by product class from my sales database. So once again, it's wizard based. We can introduce what data we want from where, but now we can actually ask people to contribute to our budget. Maybe the branch manager for branch nine doesn't think of sales as a single number. He, he thinks about it at a product group level. So we want uh, him to enter the numbers in by product class and we want that to roll up into our master budget. So now we can, and all that same functionality, we can write formulas, we can do spreads, we can add additional line, like some lines or working lines where we might wanna start using quantities instead of values and things like that. We can do all of that in here, but now the, all the work that our, our different contributors are actually doing is rolling up back into our master budget. So now if I look at any of these branches, um, probably a branch that actually has some sales would help. You'll now see that this sales line is being driven by this tab here. So any changes made here by those contributors will roll up into my GL budget. And when I publish it back, we've now got in our GL, a budget based on much more accurate data. It's not just an assumption, it's actually done at a much more granular level. Uh, we're able to make sure that the contributors to the budget uh, agree and sign off because they've done it at a level that makes sense to them. But the, uh, the added bonus is we might have done a whole bunch of work of doing a budget by branch, by rep, by product group, whatever the case may be. And we want to publish that also back into focus at a, at a sales or an inventory level, whatever we happen to be doing. So regardless of what part of the business we're in, we're still working to that same version of truth, which can, uh, can add a lot of value. 
to the business. So just conscious of time, uh, and as I said at the beginning, we're not gonna be able to show you absolutely everything this can do, uh, but just a few uh, extra things I did wanna to highlight to you is you can have manual, manual entries in here where we can actually introduce other variables we can assign them to, to other people. We can assign them to groups and branches. We can put our numbers in and use these numbers in our various tabs. So these could be quantities, employees, number of cars, new starters, whatever the case may be, very quickly and, uh, and easily. And the other one that uh, is really quite, uh, quite uh, special in this is also our headcount driver. So this allows you to not just budget for wages or, or costs at an individual uh, or at a summarized level rather, this actually allows us to, to, regardless of where our HR data might be coming from, we can import it in. Uh, as you can see, I've got a cup, I'm working with a bit of the enterprise and, and Kilimanjaro team here, and uh, we don't pay very well, unfortunately, but, um, what we can have here is we can same kind of functionality in terms of ownership of workflow. We can have employees belonging to particular groups, start dates, salaries, are they a full-time employee, any adjustments that we need to make along the way. So are they getting a bonus? Are they going on maternity leave or long service leave? Whatever the case may be, we might need to make some adjustments. We can even introduce additional things like, um, using our GL codes, we can have different benefits uh, that we can bring in here as well. I haven't set them up in here, but we might have superannuation or uh, additional um, benefits and commissions that this person is actually connected to. And we connect our GL accounts to it and we can actually have that flowing through into, into here. So we actually know what the budget cost is for these particular employees. We get an output that allows us at a, either a, um, I haven't published this yet, so I can see my headcount or full-time employees, but I can see how many I've got in which department by which group, uh, and I can actually then use those in my budget. So really, really powerful stuff that now, and we can include things like new hires. We can add new hires that haven't started yet because we can control when they start uh, and they can be in our budget. So we're budgeting at the right level uh, by team, by group, uh, et cetera. So looking at the time, we've, uh, we're have we probably running a bit out of time to show too much more, but it'd be interesting if we've got any uh, any questions. That's great, Craig. Um, really good to see some of those new features. Um, since I last looked at it, that headcount feature has been introduced. And I think every organization's probably got a, a variation of a, an employee salaries worksheet that they work to and spend all this time developing. And uh, you've taken all the pain out of that, particularly when you yeah. consider that, that um, cadence of adding new employees and trying to account for all their costs. Uh, just yeah, and even the adjust, it, it will actually calculate the make the variables for whenever their adjustment date comes in. It will actually uh, calculate, you know, the percentage value differences. Even when you add in things like super, you can set the um, the percentages. Or even if it's a like a another scheme, you can set ceilings and floors and things like that on those particular schemes and group them together. So. Um, it's especially when we've got different tax rates in different um, in different states or territories, it allows us to cater for all of that really well. Mm, that's fantastic. So just a couple of questions that we've got here. Um, and I know uh, one of the team was actually interested in seeing a little bit more around the sort of forecasting and reforecasting um, process. So you might want to just talk to that afterwards. We've gotten through a few questions. Um, yep. but one question here from Tony around, does the financials include cash flow statements? So we might want to jump over to that briefly. Yep. Uh, why don't we start there? Yep. No cash flow. We do have a cash flow statement uh, back. If I come back over here, so in here I didn't go through all of them. We do have a balance sheet. Uh, it ships out of the box with a, a P and L balance sheet, cash flow, and trial balance. 
Uh, and you can configure these to do, um, you can tailor these and customize these. This one's pretty standard. It is a statement of, uh, of cash. So I've got mindset as, you know, my uh, operating, investing and financing. I can see the cash at the start, the activities and, and the end period. But this is a customizable statement. So if you think that's a bit boring or not really going to, to match your needs, it is something that you can come in and add additional calculations, groups, you can change the names of it. This does allow you to nominate things like bank accounts and things like that. So you can, uh, it can calculate things like uh, which of your accounts are bank accounts, which ones belong in which groups. So it is using your, your GL data to produce that statement uh, in, uh, in here. Uh, in the budgeting and forecasting, we will be um, in future releases also adding cash flow forecasting into the product. Very good, great answer. Um, do you want to maybe just talk to the forecasting, reforecasting process? Um, I know for a lot of us, this has become more of an issue, uh, particularly in the last 18 months. Uh, where you know you finish the budget and then you kind of might as well rip it up because the, the, everything's changed. Can you kind of talk through that process for us, yep. Craig? So uh, what we've got here is the is the budgeting functions. That's what I was uh, was showing you here. When we publish these, uh, we can choose what we're actually publishing to. Are we going into a budget? Uh, we could also be creating a forecast. We can overwrite them and change them as. Uh, as needed, we are. This is a very actively developed product. Uh, it is also a, a cloud-based product, so we are adding new features. Like Stephen mentioned last time we worked together on it, the the headcount stuff was not in here. It it now is, uh, and it's the same with the forecasting. So there is more coming in the forecasting. We are introducing um, the ability to uh, do uh, partially complete and overwrites on your on your forecast. So there is more uh, functionality coming in the space. We do have customers because now you can come in and make changes. Uh, you can have some of this based on actuals, not just on or actuals and forecast. So these numbers can change. Uh, I've done this one purely as a budget, but we can set it up. So it's you can be forecasting future periods and all your actuals to date are actually showing in here as actuals. But uh, there is a lot more uh, forecasting is uh, means a lot to a lot of people. So we are adding a lot more than just that basic forecasting. There will be um, machine learning and, and algorithm based um, smarts going into it as well. So um, there will be more to come. Good stuff. Um, question here that I might just answer. There's a, a question about whether the budget data remains in focus or would it need to be imported back into EXO? Um, for most of our clients, um, focus, you can think of focus as being a one way. Uh, it's going to grab the data out of EXO, present that, you know, it, it actually stores the transaction level detail, rolls that up in terms of the um, sort of the data analysis. And of course, within focus, we're kind of budgeting, not only necessarily at that GL level, but at that, from a sales perspective, that might actually be at that product family level, uh, at that primary group, at that secondary group, at that sales rep level. So there's more that we are actually holding within focus than we would within EXO. And so all of our financial statements are doing that analysis based on that expanded view set of the budget data at the level of granularity that we, that we need within the business. And maybe just to add to it, if for, um, for example, so you did, there's a, there's a reason you need that, that budget data uh, external to focus, whether that's to go back into MIOB or, or some other process, you, your data is still available to you. So once it's been published in here, it's not locked in here. So here's my, my budget numbers by account. Uh, I can export this and then I can do what I want with it from there. So if there is an absolute need to use it externally, it's not purely locked in here, but we're not automatically, to Stephen's point, we're not automatically writing it back because we might have a, 
a more granular level of detail or something that um, the budget's been built at that doesn't automatically line up, but your data is available. So if you do need to load it back in, go for it. Yep. Another question here, um, does Focus handle multi-year forecasting? Multi-year? Yeah, we can, yes. Mm. So, so you can spread across multiple financial years. Do you want to go into the detail there, Craig? Yep, yep. So when we actually create the budget, so I just created this for 12 months. Um, in the process of building the budget, you can choose what period of time you're actually budgeting or forecasting for. It can be for a short or a long period. It can be by month. It could be by year. It could be by quarter. That's, that's up to you. Uh, so when you actually build it, you get to decide what period that's actually for. And we can analyze multiple sets. So for example, uh, in here, I've got current, previous and A budget, but I'm not constrained to that. So if I actually want to have um, multi years or a conservative and a stretch, I can analyze multiple and look at the variances between them all in here. So you're not constrained to a single budget or a single forecast. You can bring them all in together. That's great, Craig. Um, I think that did come up previously as well was just how that financial statements, how that information is visible within the sort of core analytics dashboarding environment. Can you just briefly talk to that as well, Craig? Yeah, I could probably why don't I, uh, do just that. Uh, where am I? Yeah, this will do. So absolutely, um, the focus product doesn't have to just be dashboards for sales. Um, there is always a, because with the way focus works and um, the nature of the product in making it fast and easy to, uh, to use your data and you might be introducing audiences to data that aren't very, um, savvy or don't want to just look at uh, numbers, maybe visuals will help you actually present the data. So you can be looking at things like, um, you know, profit against budget or what the trend has been over time. What's your EBIT trend or inventory holding as the GL sees it, not just what the operational side of the business sees it as, but also still producing your, your P&L views or even having some, um, you know, ratios that having it as a number on a, on a, on um, page five of a, of a deck might not make as much impact as actually putting it in front of people, having it updating. And if they need to drilling through these so they can see the numbers behind it. So the visualization and dashboarding of financial data is, um, is absolutely part of the product. Uh, and we are expanding this and adding more ways to uh, to visualize key ratios in your business. So you don't have to come up the ratios. We are actually expanding more into the product to actually give you the ability to use some standard ratios as well. That's great, Craig. Um, just another question here. Are we able to compare the balance sheet versus last year versus the budget? And this is where we're kind of, yeah, this is where we're kind of bringing in multiple streams. Yep. So you can you can bring in uh, you can obviously look at your balance sheet. I haven't got a budget by balance sheet in this case, so I've got my my current and my previous. I, I haven't done a a budget for it, so I can't show it. But we can also um, show things like periods. So if you actually want to see a trend on your balance sheet over time, you can. So it doesn't have to just be those fixed periods. We can change it so we can be doing as at. Um, it will do all your, your brought forward balances. Uh, and if these are not just months, but years, you, you can absolutely do that. But you still got normal focus. So you, we can actually drill into these if we want to. So if we want to actually understand liabilities by division and then looking at that by account and then do a comparison to to last year or to a budget or whatever the case may be we we absolutely can it's not just a statement it is also an analytics tool to go beyond that statement <clears throat> excuse me hopefully that answers the question 
I think it does. That's great, Craig. Thank you. Um, another question here. Does Focus currently have clients integrating data from Monday.com or HirePulse? Two very uh -huh. specific products. So let's <laughs> ask the question about those products first. Yeah. And then maybe we'll get into sort of the general integration uh, with other systems. Yep. Um, I'm pretty Monday.com. I'm, uh, I'm fairly certain we have actually got a customer on that. What was the other one again? Sorry, Stephen. Higher pause. Higher pause. Um, we do work with a lot of pause data. Uh, just, I know we're here talking with uh, you guys in a, who your primary system is going to be an MYOB system, but we also recognize that you're going to have other ancillary systems in your business, like you know, monday.com or smart sheets or, or something like that. The toolkit for focus is very, very broad. So uh, we do a lot with the MYOB world, but we, we do connect to a lot of systems globally. Um, so we have a broad toolkit. So whether there's, uh, we're connecting via a SQL database, a flat file, or even an API. So things like my advanced, we connect via API and smart sheets and salesforce.com. So as long as there is a, um, a, a way to get to the data, we can use it inside focus. We have to make sure obviously that the data that we're bringing in is relevant and makes sense because, uh, we might be integrating that data and it, it doesn't really gel and it might be better as a standalone solution, or we can, we have the luxury of uh, being able to manipulate the data to make it fit. So um, we're happy to discuss that uh, in more detail with you around your particular requirements. Uh, so if you want to get in touch with um, your Kilimanjaro enterprise account manager and tee up a time for us to, to dive into that, very happy to do so. Yeah, that's great, Craig. Just to expand upon that, certainly um, one of the real values that we see from Focus is the ability to kind of bring together all these disconnected pieces of data that we have within our businesses. Um, you know, EXO or Advanced is typically your sort of key central ERP system, but often we have other systems to the side of that. And often one of the disconnects that we actually have is the fact that we don't have all the data on the page for the people that need it at the point that they do need it. So that's where really focus brings in this um, aggregation of data across our different line of business systems. How do we visualize that? How do we show that and really empower our staff? So certainly while some of those applications might not be directly supported, uh, if there's an API access, if there's a file we can download, if there's a spreadsheet we can access or a SQL server database, there's a way to bring that data in and um, automate. Yeah. yeah and automate um kilimanjaro actually utilizes focus internally for our own uh divisional and team reporting uh, and one of the things that we've been looking at is actually bringing in call data for example uh, around calls and queues and how many calls were answered and wait times and those sorts of things so there's all sorts of opportunities um, to actually bring data in from external systems uh, there's a related question here uh, from one of our attendees that their payroll is currently through ADP. Oh, yeah. and they're asking if the product current, if Focus currently integrates with ADP. Um, yeah. Similar sort of answer, but do you have yeah. any clients? You do have yeah, clients uh, with ADP? Yeah, mostly the US, interestingly. I don't, I, I'd have to check if we've got any here in Australia, but um, definitely in the US, we have uh, worked with the ADP data before. Fantastic. All right, now question here in terms of the licensing model. Um, asked by Jennifer, does focus of its own license in order to access the EXO database or do we need additional lines, licenses? And I might kind of just talk to that generally and then we can kind of expand a little bit out from there. Um, focus itself um, talks to the EXO database at the sort of SQL Server database layer. So it doesn't need a focus license at all. Uh, it does, however, strictly need a SQL Server SQL Server licensing needs to consider the fact that, that uh, there will be a, an application consuming that. Of course, if you have a, a CPU or a core level SQL Server licensing, you don't need to worry about, we're getting a little bit technical there, but no, there's no EXO license required. Um, if you're currently utilizing MYB Advanced, uh, uh, Focus accesses the advanced data through the advanced API. Um, we can do that either through the limited API, which is included for free with your advanced system. Um, or if you're currently using that limited API, 
API connections, you may need to look at adding on a full API license to your subscription, which would mean that Focus has its own independent um, API access into the data within your ERP system. Uh, in terms of the licensing model outside of advanced or EXO requirements, uh, when we're working with EXO, we actually use a Focus Sync tool that actually connects to your, folk, to your EXO data um, grabs the data when it needs it and pushes it up to Focus, which is sitting in the cloud as a SaaS application. Uh, with MYB Advanced, of course, we don't need any sync tool. It's just an API integration. Uh, within Focus itself, and, and jump in, chime in, Craig, if there's anything you want to add to any of these points. No, no, um, within Focus itself, as a SaaS cloud product, essentially the licensing is a per user, uh, per month um, uh, model. Uh, with a upfront uh, implementation free around the, the subscription, around the particular solutions that you need, sorry. Yeah. Um, we can certainly talk to that detail, uh, you know, specifically around each of your requirements uh, on a more of a one-to-one -one type session. So yeah. hopefully that answers your question, Jennifer. Uh, another question here, does Focus integrate with Zero? Yep. Yep, we can so, we can data yeah. from, from there. If you, you've got legacy data or something in there that uh, you've uh, you've you need to bring data from there, or you've got uh, a, a, an entity that hasn't made the move over to the MYB product that is in your business, we can absolutely do that. So we can bring data from both sets and present it as one. Correct. Um, that's one of the advantages that we also see with some of our, our, our larger clients where there are actually multiple on-business systems, potentially even multiple ERP or multiple accounting systems. Mm -hmm. where you can aggregate these and from a financials and from a budgeting perspective, you get a group consolidated layer, even though that might actually be across multiple discrete systems. Correct. And that's all that I have in terms of questions at this point. Um, feel free to ask any more using that Q&A button down the bottom. Um, but Craig, uh, one of the things that I don't think we saw, and it, it might be just useful just to jump in quickly, mm -hmm. in that dashboard view, it'd be great just to see the kind of financial statement widget that you have available um, and just how that can be used by, oh, did you, I'm not sure if you did actually highlight over that before. Did you miss that. I probably glanced over it a bit too quick. Um, yeah. But yes, you, you can, you, on a dashboard, it doesn't have to just be charts and dials. You can actually embed your statements in here, and it doesn't have to just be a PL. You might want to have a um, statement of cash or balance sheet or um, multi divisional PL. Um, you can do all of that in here. Oh, that's great. I know for a lot of our clients, it's a, it's a really popular feature. The fact that we can bring kind of operational uh, BI, operational analytics, and those sorts of gauges and dials in terms of where we're at for the month, but we can also include a widget um, on a you know, departmental managers dashboard where they can actually see the, the raw financial figures that impact them and where they are in terms of compared to budgets. So that's a, a great feature. Well, look, I don't think there's any other questions at this point. You might just want to jump back to your slides, Craig. And I think we've pretty much covered off everything. I suppose just to talk to some of the next steps. Um, we certainly recognize that in a session like that, we can't cover everything. Um, and every client has unique requirements, unique line of business applications that we need to talk to. So we encourage you just to, to reach out to us, uh, make contact with us and let's get a demo booked where we can talk through your detail, your specific business requirements. Um, as a, a relatively new module, we're, we're really wanting to encourage clients to take advantage of this budgeting and forecasting piece. If you're new to Focus altogether, there's an opportunity for us to work with you to, to identify and scope what a, a Focus analytics, as well as the financial suite kind of looks like. And we are, are offering in conjunction with Focus, a little bit of a promotion coming towards the end of financial year. Um, and I don't think you've got a detail on any of these slides, do you, Craig? Oh, sorry, I don't. So I, I might just talk to that. So if you sign up for a demo, uh, to be undertaken before the 30th of June, we're actually going to offer a 12-month subscription, uh, a, a sort of an additional subscription for five what's called viewer licenses uh, with the focus subscription at no extra charge. And we're also going to offer a 15% uh, 
um, pr promotional discount on the implementation of your focus solution. And so great benefit there for those of you that are looking at really trying to turbocharge uh, your reporting, your analytics, um, and revolutionize your approach to sort of financial reporting and budgeting. Uh, the only requirement for that is if you get in contact either via those email addresses on the screen or directly with your account manager, book in a one-to-one -one demonstration session, and then you can make the decision of whether you want to proceed any further. Now, Craig, is there anything else that you wanted to add for now? No, that, I think that's a, it. It's not a, uh, we work very closely with the Kilimanjaro team. They know your your environments very well. And as Stephen mentioned, they, they use focus internally so they can absolutely uh, help you understand and implement uh, the focus solution for your business. So uh, I definitely encourage if you are interested uh, in, in this, it's something we can, uh, we'd love to talk to you more about and make use of that uh, that very generous offer to uh, to get focus up and running. Uh, just to talk briefly about the fact that we we even with COVID we've maintained a ninety seven percent retention rate. So it's an investment that you can make in your business that's going to to continually uh, provide a great dividend for you, uh, not just for for this year but potentially for for many years to come because it's, it will just help your business always uh, manage the data that you've got. That's great, Craig. That's great. Well, thank you again, Craig, for, for today's session. We really appreciate it. Uh, there is just a question here from last minute, nothing like the, the 11th hour question. I'd like to refer back to the seminar in discussions internally. Will it be available on YouTube? So yes, we are recording the session. I'm not sure if we will be making it available via YouTube or via a download link, but um, our marketing team will be sending out a post webinar email where they'll provide those details for you. So thank you for asking that. I should have mentioned it earlier. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for attending. It's fantastic to have, to have you on the session. Uh, we're really passionate at Kilimanjaro and Enterprise about supporting our clients and helping you give your people the tools to help them do their jobs better. Uh, we think Focus is a fantastic tool that can really add to that to conversation internally and look forward to continuing with the conversation with you. Have a fantastic day and thank you again for attending. Thank you very much, everybody.